Hello, uh, my name is Andre. I work at Sidero Labs, and today I'm going to talk about upgrading Kubernetes using Talos Linux. So in this video, we're going to talk about the Kubernetes upgrade process and then do a live demo of Kubernetes upgrade on Talos. So let's start with the discussion, what is the Kubernetes upgrade? First of all, what it takes to upgrade Kubernetes. We need to upgrade the control plane components, the Kubernetes API server, controller manager, and scheduler. Uh, next, we might need to update various manifests which are running or uh, services which are running on in Kubernetes, right? Like the core DNS and potentially CNI and other manifests. And last thing, we need to update the kubelet on each node in the cluster. So let's talk about how the upgrade process works. Uh, in Talos, in the CLI called Talos CTL, we have a command called Upgrade Kubernetes, which actually performs the upgrade. The upgrade is completely client-side. And all uh, that tool does is basically patching the either the Talos machine configuration or patching Kubernetes resources to perform an upgrade. Talos machine configuration contains definitions of the control plane static pods like API server and also contains version of the kubelet. So by patching the machine configuration, uh, this tool will make Talos actually restart the service on a new version or update some settings of that. And for things which are running in Kubernetes itself, this tool, we will use the Kubernetes patch API to update the Kubernetes resources. Um, some useful tips uh, for running this tool. First of all, you can use dry run to see the plan changes before running the upgrade and see if these changes make sense. Uh, this script is safe to restart if it fails. If there is any failure like the API became unavailable, you can always restart the script and it will continue from the point when it was stopped. And it's a good measure to take a backup of etcd database before the upgrade so that there is a way to roll back the changes or recover if something goes wrong. But usually this procedure is completely safe. You can upgrade and uh, downgrade uh, freely from one version of Kubernetes to another. Uh, let's move on to the live demo. So here I have a terminal which is split into three parts. In the uh, upper part, I'm going to use that to send comments. In the middle part, you can see the kubectl get nodes output. I will use that to show the information about the cluster or running pods. And the bottom part contains the uh, console logs of Talos itself coming from all nodes combined. So here I have a Kubernetes cluster with three control plane nodes and two workers. It's running Talos 0.14.1 the latest stable version available at the moment. And the Kubernetes version is somewhat outdated. It's running Kubernetes 1.22.3. And I want to upgrade that. So like we already discussed, let's start the upgrade by taking the snapshot of the etcd database. That's easy to do with the TeloCTL etcd snapshot command. It's going to dump the contents of etcd and store it in a local file, which I called etcd backup, which I can use to do disaster recovery. But this is a safety measure, of course. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dry run upgrade uh, Kubernetes to see what are the changes which are planned. So I'm going to upgrade to the latest available Kubernetes version, which is 
23.3 and I added the flag dry run so that I can see the actual changes which are going to be applied without uh, applying them first. If I run this command, it's going to go through the same sequence of steps as it goes in the normal run, but it won't make any changes. And I can scroll back and see the, the plan. So first of all, this tool discovered the topology of the cluster, so the list of the master and worker nodes. And then it starts with the upgrade. The first step in the upgrade is upgrading the control plane Kubernetes components. It starts with the Cube API server and is going to do the upgrade on each master node in the cluster. Same for Cube controller manager followed by the Cube scaler. At this point, all uh, components are updated. And one more thing I forgot to talk about is that the tool starts also by validating that all the resources which are currently present in the cluster are not removed in the next version of Kubernetes I'm going to upgrade to. But getting back to the upgrade, the next step is updating the daemon set kube proxy. Uh, that's also a control plane component but runs as a daemon set in Kubernetes, followed by the kubelet upgrade. Uh, this is going to each node, not only control plane nodes, but also worker nodes, because kubelets run on every node in the cluster. And the last step is updating the manifest. So this step matches the manifests as they are found in the API server at the moment, versus the manifests of the running Talos version. So this cluster was bootstrapped on an earlier version of Talos, and new Talos ships with updated bootstrap manifests. And Talos itself never does updates to the manifests to be on the safe side. But if we scroll down, we can see that there is a new version of Flannel available. It was 3.0 and now it's 5.1. And we can run this upgrade. And uh, also there are some changes to the core DNS uh, manifest. The core DNS manifest is going to be updated. There are some changes to the configuration file and there is an update to core DNS version. It's going from 184 to 187. That's are all the changes which are planned and they look good to me. So I'm going to proceed with the actual upgrade. I'm going to make this terminal uh, smaller and I will run the same command, but this time without the dry run flag. So we can see that it started and it's now running slower because all it is doing right now is patching or updating the configuration and waiting for the change to actually propagate. So right now it's updating the Cube API server pod and we can also watch the upgrade process by looking at the uh, pod status. Uh, so we can see right now it's upgrading API server on master three. And if you manage to see that it, it's coming pretty fast the pod got restarted with the new pod definition with the new version and now it's moving through the cube controller manager components they are being updated right now and it is as the update is going the controller manager is restarted with the new version and once it is up and running uh, the tool moves on to the next node until all control plane nodes are updated and then it moves to the next component and so on. So in this case, it went through the API server controller manager. Now it's updating the cube scheduler component. And uh, once all control plane base control plane components are updated, uh, it will move on to the cube proxy daemon set. One interesting uh, thing here is that if these, if there is something wrong, like the the pod won't start, the tool will stop at 
at this moment and it won't proceed any further. And uh, we can dig into the cluster state to see why the new updated pod can start. Um, and uh, if there is any problem, we can always revert changes to the machine configuration uh, to use the older version of or previous version or any other fixes which might be needed um, depending on the settings for example there might be some flag which got removed in a newer version uh, and in this case configuration needs to be updated but this usually happens in a rare cases of having special modifications or updates and usually in the default configuration there is no interaction required and right now the tool moved on to the updating the kubelet and uh, we can see in the get nodes output that the kubelet version is being updated right now it's getting changed to the new version as we see it on node by node basis so the kubelet is restarted but all the workloads which are running are can still perfectly run fine the kubelet can be restarted and then doesn't affect the running workloads during the time the kubelet is down of course new uh, pods can be run on the node but the pods which are running at the moment um, can continue running during this time so we're now the tool updated the last uh, the last uh, pod and now it goes through the updating the manifest which will trigger uh, restarts to the uh, components and uh, it says that everything is updated and we can check so we can see that in the get nodes output that the, we're running uh, the kubelet version we expected. Uh, we can also describe some pods to see the cube API server version or like I have here cube scheduler version. We can scroll back and verify that we are actually running the version we were supposed to upgrade to. Uh, we can also look in the to the pod status to make sure that everything is fine uh, we can see that the uh, the cube flannel component is being restarted right now after the uh, version update so the CNI is now updating and the core DNS got updated uh, and it's up and running and healthy uh, so that's basically it in a few seconds the kubernetes will take care of restarting the remaining pods and uh, things should be back to what is expected so thanks for watching and if you have any questions please feel free to reach out to us to join our slack or send an email thank you and have a great day